In this video, we're going to walk through everything you need to know to make an area chart using D3. By the end of this video, you'll have this basic area chart that you can use in any of your projects. In the next video, we're going to implement tool tips, two tool tips that will run up and down the Y axis and along the X axis to make it easier to tell which points you're exactly looking at. We're going to add a date slider in the third video to let us narrow down the range of information we're looking at in our chart. We're going to use this page as our inspiration and we're going to look at Nintendo stock prices over time. The link to our data source is in the description below. What you're going to want to do is go to that link. You want to go to this time period area and choose max. This will give us the full range of the Nintendo stock price and then hit download. This will download the CSV and add this to your working directory. That's the file we'll be using to build our area chart. Like always, links to the files we'll be going through in the tutorial are included down below. Our HTML file is going to start out very simple for the first part throw in a title, call our div, which in this case I've called chart container, and then import in the D3 library, and then call the script that we'll be writing. I've called this script video1.js, you can call it whatever you'd like, as long as it matches what your script name is. And we'll go into our script. Like always, the first thing we're gonna do is define our margins, our width, and our height. So we'll add that in now. Get that out of the way so we can see everything. For this chart, I'm doing a margin top of 70, right of 60, bottom of 50, and a left of 80. These can be anything you'd like to meet your needs. And I'm gonna make a chart with a width of 1600 and a height of 800. Following that, we'll build up our X and Y scales. Since we're gonna be visualizing stock prices, our X axis is gonna use D3 scale time. We will set the range from zero to the width. This basically means this range of pixels is where our data visualization can live. For our Y, we're gonna use D3 scale linear and we'll set the range from height to zero. Next, we're gonna create the SVG element where our chart's gonna live. Declare const called SVG and we'll use D3 select to select our chart container, which we added as a div here in the HTML file. We will append an SVG to it. We'll give it some attributes, a width attribute and a height attribute. The width will be the width plus margin left and margin right, and the height will be height plus margin top and margin bottom. And we will append a group to it, and that group we will transform and translate by the margin left and margin top. What this is doing, once our viz is done, instead of being snug and tight up here in the corner, it's gonna knock it down a little bit, give it a nice sleek margin all the way around the chart. All right, it's time to load and process our data. We will use D3 CSV and load in the CSV that we've added to our directory. We'll then use the then call to do something with that data once it's been loaded. So after it's loaded, we will create a constant called parse date. This is gonna use D3 time parse to parse our dates with this format. After that, we're gonna use data and a for each call. We're gonna say for every item in our data set, we're gonna run each date through our time parse function, and we're gonna take each closing cost or each closing price and make it a number. If we don't do this, so let's say we comment that out and then console log our data, go in here. You'll see that we get an array of objects and everything is strings. Everything in quotes here means that it's a string. But we want these dates to be dates and these numbers to be numbers. So now if I uncomment that and load up our data, you'll see that these are now dates and these closes have become blue. That means they're a number. This is here twice. That. Next, we're going to set our domains for the X and Y scales. So this is the domain of data that's going to live within our range that we declared earlier. For the X, we want all the dates. And so we're using D3 extent, calling the data set and saying, give me all the dates. For the Y domain, we want zero all the way to the maximum value within the data set. So we're gonna use d3.max, call the data, and give us the biggest one. After that, we're going to add the x-axis. So we're going to call svg append, and we're gonna append a new group. We're gonna transform and translate it by the height. I'm gonna comment that out so you can see this in action. Then we will call d 3 axis bottom and pass in our x that we've, been, that we've been developing. When we hit save, you'll see nothing happen. That's because I left this up here. This is very important to remember. Part of everything we're doing after we load the data is also building out all of this chart. I left this up here. I need to actually bring it all the way down to the bottom of the chart because everything we're doing in here is what we're doing after we load the data. So now when I hit save, you'll see our axis has shown up up here, but it's at the top. That's not where we want it. That's where this comes in. We will translate it by the height and that brings it all the way down here. So now our axis is at the bottom of the chart. Let's add in our Y axis next. We will append a new group to our SVG. We're gonna transform and translate it by the width. We're gonna call axis right. That's because I want this axis on the right side of the chart. 
chart because that's where our eyes are generally going. That's where the most recent stock price is gonna be. And so it's a little bit more beneficial to have the axis on that side of the chart. So I'm gonna actually format the ticks a little bit here right off the bat so that we have two decimal places as well. We'll hit save and there's our right axis. Oh, and I even added the uh, little dollar symbol in there so we know it's money. With our axes on the chart, it's time to build our line and area generators. So we will do const line equals D3 line. We're gonna say the X value of the line is the date and the Y value of the line is the closing price. For an area chart, we also need our area generator. So we'll do a const area and we'll call it D3 area and we'll assign the X to all the dates and the Y zero to the height and the Y one to the D close. We can hit save, but nothing's gonna happen yet. We've declared our generators, but we haven't actually added them to the SVG. So now we will add our area first to the SVG. We will append a new path and the datum is our data. We'll give it a class attribute of area, then we'll call this next attribute of D, and we're gonna call in our area generator. We're gonna fill it with this hex code, which like a money colored hex code that I found, and we'll give it an opacity of 0.5. When we hit save, voila, we've got an area chart now in our SVG. A nice thing to do when you're building area charts is to also throw in a line as well. It kinda gives it a little extra weight. So now we will add our line path. We'll do SVG append path, datum is the data, for the class this time, it's a line. We're not gonna give it any fill. We're gonna give it a stroke of that same money color and a stroke width of one. And for the D attribute, we're gonna call in our line generator. When we hit save, this nice line shows up. And there you have it. A simple basic area chart with a nice line going over the whole thing built right in D3. In the next video, we're gonna add a custom tool tip that puts a little dot that follows around wherever your mouse goes, as well as two other sharp little tool tips that follow the x-axis and y-axis to always show you what date and what price value you're currently hovering over. And in the final video, we'll add a slider to control the date range of which stock prices we're looking at. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.